prednisone is the most hated drug in the world, according to a neurologist who treats people with a condition called myasthenia gravis. What is myasthenia gravis? It's a condition where they are completely reliant on prednisone and other treatments to stay alive and to not have issues with their muscles. Hi, I'm Dr. Megan, your prednisone pharmacist. And I was stunned when I was listening to a continuing education all about myasthenia gravis given by a renowned neurologist who treats people with myasthenia gravis when he said it's the most hated drug in the world because people with myasthenia gravis don't have a lot of great options to treat their condition. And prednisone is one of the last ditch efforts. So what is myasthenia gravis? Well, there's a connection between the muscles and the nerves. It's called the neuromuscular junction. And there's a signal that goes in between called acetylcholine. And there's a problem with that connection in this disease where the acetylcholine receptor is being attacked by antibodies. For some reason, people with myasthenia gravis, which I'm going to call MG from now on, are having an autoimmune reaction to their own connections. Basically, if you dumb it all down, between your brain and your muscles having the signals all connect, there's a disconnect and things aren't happening as they're supposed to, which doesn't sound like a big, huge problem, right? Aside from the fact that it's hard to have the grip strength to open a lid, or it's or eyelids droop and you can't see, or breathing, the muscles used in breathing can be impaired. We don't want any of those things. And so to save people's lives so they don't stop breathing, and so they can actually see, people have to take prednisone and other treatments. Other symptoms of myasthenia gravis include double vision. So the eyelids can droop or the muscles that make the eyes go back and forth, up and down, aren't working properly. And so it can feel like double vision or the, the eyes can just not be working properly. And so it makes it so you can't see the right way. One of the worst is the difficulty swallowing called dysphagia. And dysphagia makes it so you can choke on your own food or you're given a treatment you're supposed to take, but it's really hard to swallow. And you want to talk and communicate how you're feeling, but the muscles in your mouth aren't working properly. And so you might have slurred speech. Finally, you might have weakness in your arms or your legs, making it so you need other people to help take care of you. You might not be able to walk on your own. You might not be able to cook or clean or be independent because your muscles aren't working properly. So the reason people have to take prednisone is because it's an immunosuppressant. It's telling the antibodies that the body is making, attacking that acetylcholinesterase receptor to turn down. It's telling them it's okay. You don't need to worry about it. Just pretend like it's not there. Just don't get distracted it's okay. It's just me. I'm just me. You don't need to attack me, right? And this reduces muscle weakness and fatigue, but it can take two to four weeks to really kick in the way it needs to. And the typical dose for most conditions that people take prednisone for is somewhere less than or equal to 20 milligrams. But people who take prednisone for myasthenia gravis might need one to one and a half milligrams per kilogram per day. And if you're 130 pound woman, that would be 60 milligrams of prednisone. So that's at minimum three times the normal dose of prednisone and up to 100 milligrams, which is five times the normal dose. The big problem there is that prednisone causes a lot of side effects. Hence the reason the neurologist called it the most hated drug in the world, because it's saving lives. But is coming at a huge cost. And it's really hard to find a place where that balance makes sense and you feel well. The dose of myasthenia gravis is often started really high and then it needs to be continued for sometimes six to 12 months to really see the full benefit. And that's a long time for prednisone. 
often prednisone is only prescribed for a week to three weeks. So a year of treatment is a very long time for this drug because it's so harmful. So how is it so harmful? Well, check out all of these side effects that I personally experienced while I was taking prednisone for my autoimmune condition. I didn't have this one. I had a different one, but I had to be on high doses as well for a long time. And I was taking it for eight to nine months and I had weight gain and it was really awkward weight gain because it went to my belly and to my face, but I also had muscle loss. So my arms and my legs shrunk. So my muscles looked skinny. So I looked like a terrible stick figure with a big round circle in the middle and then just these little stick arms and legs. Then I had trouble sleeping. It was horrible. The insomnia and how cranky it made me feel. The mood changes and the emotional roller coasters. It was also scary knowing what it was doing to my bones. As a pharmacist, the one thing I really knew about prednisone is that it causes osteoporosis. And I did not want to touch prednisone with a 10 foot pole, but I had no choice. It was either that or I could die of my autoimmune disease. So I took it just like people with myasthenia gravis do. We take this poison and hope that the benefits outweigh the risks. But is there anything else that could help? Well, there are some other treatments that might help. The problem is they can take a long time to work and they can cause side effects too. But the number one treatment that people with myasthenia gravis need is a drug called peridostigmine. And this is because it's working in the opposite of the way that the myasthenia gravis is working. It's helping with the acetylcholinesterase receptor. How peridostigmine works is it helps that acetylcholinesterase inhibitor. It's, it's called an acetylcholinesterase inhibitor. And basically it increases the amount of acetylcholine, that signaling molecule that goes in between the muscles and the nerves. It increases the amount of that that's available. And so that gives symptomatic relief. So maybe the eyelid drooping will go away and things like that. And hopefully it means that there's a lower dose of prednisone needed. Some studies have shown that when you combine peridostigmine with prednisone, that a lower dose of prednisone is needed, which is really good because the side effects of prednisone are related to the amount of drug given over time. And so we want to keep the amount of drug that we're exposed to as low as possible. Other treatments that can help with myasthenia gravis include immunosuppressants like azathioprine, mycophenolate mofetil, which is called Celseft, cyclophosphamide, cyclosporin, tacrolimus, and those often take months to work. For example, azathioprine takes six to 12 months to work and you don't get the maximum benefit from it for one to three years of treatment, which is why it's amazing that recent scientific advances of treatments have been invented. So first of all, we have complement inhibitors and they work in one to two weeks and you see the maximum benefit at two to three months. Then there's the FCRN inhibitors and they also work in one to two weeks with their maximum efficacy of four to six weeks. So you only have to wait a month and a half to see if it's gonna work for you. The main problem with these new treatments is how unbelievably, incredibly expensive they are. They cost nearly one half of a million dollars per year per person. And that's amazing. It's like truly stunning that they would cost that much money. If you think as if you're a drug company, it kind of makes sense. There aren't that many people with myasthenia gravis. So they want to recoup their investment with just the few people. But still, it's to me seems a little bit like extortion and it's an extreme amount of money. There are other treatments that aren't necessarily approved for it, but can be used like rituximab. I personally took rituximab and that's what put my autoimmune disease into remission. And it's a monoclonal antibody that attacks the B cells in our immune system. As a pharmacist, I wanted to make you aware of one other very important fact, and that is what can trigger the myasthenia gravis to get worse. And these are drugs usually that can interfere with the acetylcholine junction. 
And so we want to do whatever we can to avoid those. And these are certain antibiotics and beta blockers. So if you get an infection, make sure that your doctor is completely aware that you have myasthenia gravis. And then if you have heart disease of any kind, whether it's high blood pressure or you've had a heart attack in the past, make sure that your doctors know that beta blockers are not safe for you. A controversial one is magnesium containing products. And the real concern is when people are hospitalized with myasthenia gravis and they receive an in intravenous injection of magnesium, it can trigger a myasthenic crisis. And so the injection, like the rapid tons of magnesium flooding the system has been shown to worsen myasthenia gravis. But the question is, does oral magnesium also cause that problem? Because most foods contain some magnesium. And so you can't avoid magnesium completely, and you shouldn't because you do need some magnesium in your diet. And so it's controversial whether it's the injectable only that causes this, flooding the system, going straight to the blood, or if oral things, like whether it's magnesium containing supplements or magnesium containing foods will cause this. And there isn't convincing evidence that it's the foods and supplements causing it. It's mostly just the injectable, but there's no clear answer at this moment. So be sure to talk with your doctor before you try any medications and supplements. And if you're wondering what can I possibly do to help counteract some of these side effects of the prednisone? Is there anything, if you're going to have to be on it this long, that you can do? And I wanted to assure you that, yes, there are things you can do to counteract the side effects of prednisone. And I compiled them all into my prednisone checklist. It's a list of all the things you need to do to make sure that you're doing all you can to prevent the side effects of prednisone from affecting you in the worst ways. Plus, I also include the top seven things to avoid while taking prednisone. And this is in general, not just for people who have myasthenia gravis. So download the prednisone checklist today so that you can know exactly what you need to check and the seven things to avoid. Signing off as Dr. Megan, your prednisone pharmacist.